I've been using Arco Linux for the past few months. In this video, I want to talk about my kind of overall thoughts about it, what I like, what I think needs improvement, and just give some overall thoughts on the distro. I decided to use Arco Linux because it had a good version of i3 and had a lot of good defaults built in. So this seemed like a solid choice to use for my i3 challenge. If you're not familiar with Arco Linux, it's an Arch-based distro that is really designed to help people learn more about Linux, especially the Arch variant. If I'll recall right, one of its original goals was to help people get to the point where they felt comfortable installing Arch Linux the quote-unquote Arch way. So if you're not familiar with Arch, it ultimately is a distro that gives you a lot of customization as to what's actually installed. For a long time, when you downloaded an Arch ISO, all you would have would be a terminal and you'd have to work through that. You'd have to pick things like the locale, you'd have to set up the file systems. You'd have to do all of that stuff in a terminal just by looking at the Arch Wiki or understanding how to do it. I wouldn't say that this process is overly difficult, but it can be confusing if you're new to Linux or if you don't know some of that those aspects of Linux. I think the real difficulty with Arch for some people is getting it to the point where it's actually completely usable for you because every little thing you have to often go install. But since then, there are tools that now help you install Arch and there are many Arch-based distros that can make the process a lot easier for people. When I remember first hearing about the project, I believe there were two installs. There was Arco Linux B and Arco Linux D and they had a good number of desktop environments and window managers already. The project has grown a lot since then. We'll take a look at the ISO page and you can kind of see just how many different versions there are. And many of these also have specific desktop environments attached to them or window managers as well. Another big area that we'll talk about a little bit more later on is some of the tools that the Arco Linux team has created like the Arch Linux Tweak tool. One area where you may have heard of the Arco Linux project is if you've stumbled across Eric Dubois' YouTube channel. Eric Dubois is the leader of Arco Linux and he has posted something like 4,600 when I was making my notes, YouTube videos about how to do various things in Arco Linux. If you have a question about how to do something in Arco Linux, there's a pretty decent chance that Eric Dubois has posted a video about it. It's really interesting to see how much support that there is out there for it. And it's really cool to see the dedication that Eric and the rest of the crew have for actually keeping this distro going. And lastly, one of the really cool things about Arco Linux and one of the things they have always done is that they have a lot of different desktop environments or window manager to choose from in their ISOs. Oftentimes, if you're looking to try out a particular desktop environment or window manager on Arch Linux, that's where you are probably going to have a decent shot of finding it. So let's get into some of the pros. So the pros of Arco Linux. So one of the first things is that the Arch Linux tweak tool is built in. We'll take a look at that. So as you can see here, this is my NeoFetch. And so let's pull up the Arch Linux tweak tool. There it is. It's going to ask for my password. And I'll just show a couple of things that I I think I've talked a little bit about this in the i3 video, but here at first you can install various icons and packages and themes. So that's kind of nice that they have all of this kind of in one location. You don't have to worry about going out to your specific desktop environment or window managers area for that. And the next thing is auto start. This is just a simple area where you can put any kind of things that you want to automatically start right here. And then here's the design. This is another themes area. I'm not sure what the difference is between this one and this. The next one is one of the nice areas for the Arch Linux Tweak tool. And that is that you can actually install different desktops from here and window managers as well. So here's the entire list that you can pick from. There is a lot from Xnomad up to Awesome and even, even some smaller stuff like Barry. I've not really heard of Barry before, but they have some of the common stuff like Deepin that you kind of hear about sometimes, DWM, i3, Hyper, but they also have stuff that, you know, I don't really hear a lot of people talk about as much anymore. You, what you'll do is you'll select it, you'll click install, 
and then you'll be able to get that quickly installed. It really is a very short process. I want to say when I installed Awesome recently, it took like 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20. Additionally, right here, you'll see the desktop trasher. So if you had a desktop environment that you wanted to delete, you could click into this and actually remove a desktop environment. And then next we got some fixes. These are just things that you can fix on any Arch-based distro. And by the way, you can install this Arch Linux tweak tool on basically any Arch distro at this point, And a lot of this stuff should work. You can change Grub, you can theme it out if you need to. You can do stuff with your login. You know, there are a number of things down through here. Mirrors you can update. Uh, this is where you can tell what NeoFetch you want to have, like what you want to have in your NeoFetch rather, or if you want to have a different one, some Pac-Man options, and then some other stuff. You know, it just depends. You can even install different shells, which we'll get to uh, more about shells in a moment. But ultimately, a lot can be done from this Arch Linux Tweak tool. It's really cool to see all of the stuff that they've added into this. It's a very useful option for people that are looking to, you know, do some stuff in Arch that maybe they don't want to do manually. So the next thing on our list is that, like we just saw, Arch Linux makes it very easy to install multiple desktops. So if this is something where you're looking to try out a couple of different desktop environments or window managers, Arco Linux is a really good, great option because ultimately it lets you do a lot of that with just a few clicks. Most of the ones that it allow you to set up aren't overly difficult to set up, but it is nice to just have it all done. And with that, the next two kind of tie into that. So the first one is that Arco Linux generally has some pretty solid default themes. And I know some people will say, well, that's just a default theme. People are going to change it anyway. Some will, some won't. I generally, honestly, don't. To me, though, it's nice that the Arco Linux team takes some time to just put something together that doesn't look like a generic install. To me, this is a first impression thing for people trying out your distro. If it doesn't look like you've done a lot to it, I feel like that's going to be something where it's going to be more difficult for people to notice. I think that's one of the reasons that Garuda has grown like it has, as far as I can tell, because of the overall look of it. Like it, it just looks really good. And I'm not saying that every distro needs to look like Garuda. I'm just saying it is an eye catcher. The next thing that I have here is the last pro on my list, and that is that generally you have some pretty sane defaults, especially for like i3 and Plasma. In i3, the auto tiler was set up by default, and you also had the menu and the status bar already set up. On the Plasma side, things just seem to be set up the way I would expect, and overall, I just think that Arco Linux gives a solid starting point for a lot of people when trying out a desktop environment or just getting to something that they can quickly start using. Now, let's talk about some things where I think it's a bit more mixed. The first one is the configuration files. i3 and bash in particular are two that I want to note here, and we'll take a look at those momentarily, but they are extensive. And this is something where ultimately this can be a really nice thing, but it can also be something where it ends up being a bit of a hassle to try to find exactly what you're looking for, or it may just be adding a lot of stuff that you don't need. So let's take a look at the i3 configuration file, and then we'll take a look at the bash file, and you'll kind of see what I mean. So as you can see here, I'm at the, oh, or maybe you can't. Let me flip over to the other side of the screen. So down here in the bottom right hand corner, you'll notice this is nearly 900 lines. This is the i3 configuration file. And as I kind of talked about in my i3 video, there's just a lot here that I am probably not going to care about. So yeah, this is something where this could be a bit too much to get started with for some people. For me personally, I liked it because it gave me an idea of what was possible. But it's something where this is, it can be a lot to try to find what you're looking for, especially if you're using something like Vim and you're still getting to learn Vim like I am. But let's uh, quit this one and then we'll go to the bash RC. So vim.bash RC. And you'll notice down here at the bottom, this one is 425 lines. Let's go back to my normal spot. And I have added a few lines here, an alias or two, but most of this is just the default Arco Linux bash 
setup. And you can see there's so many aliases added. So yeah, it's just it's just a lot. And some of this stuff, maybe people will end up using. Others, I don't know. I mean, you almost have to look through some of this just to know this even exists, just because of some of it. Like some of it makes sense though. Like there's a, I think it's back up toward the top. Yeah, so there's some common like LS stuff here, like LA and LL, those are, those are fairly common to somewhat, somewhat. But uh, when you get to stuff like uh, update, here we go. This is one where they have update, they have like a misspelled update, they have an abbreviation for update, they have another abbreviation for update, or maybe another misspelling of update. And it's just, it is kind of convenient to type update and not have to type out pseudo pacman s y o u. But yeah, I mean, it's just a lot, just a lot of options here that you may not, not care about at all. And that brings me to kind of the jumping off point from that is that Arco Linux is very opinionated when it comes to installing those config files. For example, with i3, I believe they had Variety installed and enabled by default. If you don't know, Variety is a program that helps you manage your wallpaper, and it has a feature that will actually change your wallpaper every X number of minutes or every time you reboot, things like that. Last I saw when I was looking at the Qtile install a while ago, that was all turned on by default. I don't know if it was still turned on for the i3 install. I immediately just went and turned everything off on it, but it was something where you just kind of have to watch out for some stuff like that because they just have a specific way that they think the distro should be put together. And in that sense, I, I like that they have some ideas of what they're trying to do. But again, it may be something where it's not a good fit for what you're trying to do. And now we are getting to kind of my list of cons. And I was hesitant to put this one on the list because I think it's really cool they'll find how much you can find here. But I think the Arco Linux websites, and I say S there for a reason, which I'll show you momentarily. I think these have become a bit unwieldy trying to find what you're actually looking for. Because I know one of the things that I would struggle with a little bit when I would come here sometimes is just finding the actual file that I needed. Yeah, so here's all the actual installs at this point. You have XL, you have D, you have XS, XS, LTS, uh, this one, then, and then B ISOs. And this is where the desktops are all separate. So yeah, there are many different options here now. Um, and these are actually better laid out. At one point, like it was a little difficult to really find like what you actually needed. But anyway, you can at least get to the ISOs now. But if you look here, we have a page for each of these and that's that's a good start. But this is just one of the sites. There's arcolinux.info or actually we moved over to arcolinux.info. When we went to downloads, Notice we get over to arcolinux.info and it looks like the same site. So you don't even sometimes notice because this start, this bar is, is the same at the top. It that just has different options. But my point is like, that's just two of them. I think there are more that all look the same that have different, that have different information on them and that have different addresses on them. You can use the search here and it's, not bad. So if I wanted to look for the, oh, that's uh, search is over here. That's the language. So if I go and I try to search, so like if I just say, whoops, let's say Arch Linux tweak tool, this will bring up a lot of the videos and blog entries that have been added here. And there's some good stuff here, but I just don't know that this is something where it's actually easy to find stuff anymore. It, it's like they, I almost think they need to go back and sort of clear some of this old information out. You know, I don't know how accurate some of this still is. And maybe they're doing that and this is all this is all fine, but I just know that there are times where I search what I feel like should be a fairly easy question and I don't necessarily find the answer that I would that I would hope for from Google or from the website. So like 
For example, if I like the Arch Linux Tweak tool, what I really think I want is here. This is what I think I would actually want. And I'm like, oh, but like here, I can't really like what what is this what does this mean? How can I actually I can get to the Arch Linux Spices application here, but it talks about the Arch Linux Tweak tool and it says I'll install all desktops and more, and then it doesn't really doesn't really tell you how to do that from here. I can't click on this. If I click on this picture, I just get it to zoom in the picture. I believe what they want you to do is they want you to install the Arch Linux, Arco Linux rather, Spices, and click over here and, and do this, I think is what they want you to do, because then you can run the Arch Linux Tweak Tool install. But it's just a, it's just a lot of information here and sometimes I think it is more difficult to find the information than I really feel like it should be. And really quick, I just had two more things that I kind of found as to be cons, and they may be Arch-specific things, they may be NVIDIA things, I'm not really sure. But uh, I am still running X for this machine, so I'm running X on NVIDIA and I'm running X on i3, rather X on Plasma and X on i3 when I was doing i3. and. One thing that I noticed, especially in i3, is that sometimes my computer would go to sleep and when I would wake it back up, the screen would be shifted over to the left. And I'll kind of show an example of what that would look like. I can't get an actual, you know, recording of what happened, but I can show you what it looked like. And so I'll have that inserted over the top and you can kind of see that, but it's just, yeah, it's just weird. Um, I couldn't ever actually get it to recenter. I would have to reboot for that. The other thing that I noticed is that when Plasma, when I actually have the machine go to sleep, sometimes applications will close. Like Discord almost always seems to close when I do that. And I don't know why that is. I haven't found that out yet, but it is something that I want to dig through. But again, that could just be a real kind of random Arch issue that's going on or an NVIDIA issue. So I don't want to put that at the feet of Arco Linux, but I do want to mention it here just in case. But all that being said, Arco is an excellent option for people that are wanting to try out Arch and maybe learn more about Arch and really try to dive deep, or they just want a simple setup for something like i3 or a different window manager or a different desktop that they can't easily find elsewhere. It's really cool to see the kind of learning that they have tried to add around Arco Linux. Eric Dubois, again, has a lot of videos in his YouTube channel. If you're curious at all about it, I would definitely check those out. And yeah, um, we'll see if I stick on Arco. I am kind of looking right now to kind of figure out my workflow and all that. So it may not stick around, but it's not because of Arco. It's just because of my particular needs at this point in time. What are your thoughts? Uh, what distro you're running at this point? Have you tried out Arco Linux? Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and I will see you next time.